Hello and welcome to MTD CNC India. I am here at Tagma Dye Mold Show and I am standing in front of Imaginarium stall and I am going to talk to Payal about their fascinating journey in India. Thank you Payal for inviting us here. Please tell us the journey of uh, Imaginarium. So, hi, thank you for even joining us today here. Um, I have been working with Imaginarium from now four years. Imaginarium as a company has been very fascinating. Starting back in 2008, when 3D printing was not even a name that was known to anyone in India. But we were the first pioneers to start a mission and make sure we democratize manufacturing for everyone out here. So right now, Imaginarium is known to be India's largest 3D printing company. Not only we help an innovator, a maker, but also that one individual person who wants to start and make a product out in the market. So starting from design to prototyping to manufacturing to mass production, everywhere we would be able to help you. So that's where we have been going ahead and that's our mission. That's awesome. So uh, can you tell us when did you start, which year did you start here in India and how big is your team? So we started in India back in 2008. We started with a small 200 square meters factory. Today we are right now in Mumbai headquartered with more than 350 Imaginarians. Now we are not only serving India but also serving globally to all the various countries you can name. And not only in one industry where we started but right now we are helping more than 30 industries. You name an industry and I'm sure they must be using 3D printing. Amazing. So can you uh, uh, talk about what kind of business verticals you have? I mean, what kind of industry you are serving in, on, in those verticals? Sure. So um, as I just mentioned, we have been serving more than 30 industries. So how we have divided ourselves to make sure each expertise for every industry is different. Our humans, the technology, the experts, the, um, the machines, everything is different for every industry. So we, uh, to start with, I would say first we have Imaginarium Rapid which is uh, under engineering services, not only 3D printing, but all kind of advanced manufacturing services that you can name. CNC machining, vacuum casting, injection molding, sheet metal, all of them from the start, from design level to the final mass production. Then you talk about uh, Imaginarium Life, which is a medical sector. They work with doctors to make sure all the trauma cases, deformities, they make patient specific solutions starting from metal implants to a plastic guide fixture, all of them biocompatible, making sure human life is saved at any cost. Another is a vertical which is called as Imaginarium Precious, which works as it says precious, it works for jewelry. So when you talk about jewelry, all precious, gold, diamond, silver, whatever you name, you make all these beautiful jewelries out there. I guarantee you in last one decade, any jewelry piece that you have bought, has 100% gone through a 3D printing uh, procedure. There's no jewelry now that's made without it. So that's like one of the innovations that we have been working in from last 15 years. Another vertical through which we are here at the Tagma stall is Imaginarium Solutions, which does is partner with all the best OEMs in the world, making sure India grows towards that. We use the best technology which is available across the world in India itself. So we have partnered with companies like G Additive, the G Additive who makes their own machines for the G aviation industry. The same company we sell the 3D printers, use their 3D printers. And then we have Form Labs, your Ultimaker, Maker, Materialize and many 30 plus OEMs that we have partnered with. So one motto that Imaginum always works and makes sure for every industry is we are ourselves the user of the technology and then we are trying to sell. Also now we are not talking about just prototyping, but end used parts. So imagine you just waking up at your home and you realize my door handle is not working. You don't have to worry about calling someone. You just do is you have a 3D printer, you download a file, print it, use it. So that's where we are trying to move. Amazing. I mean, I think it's a whole Imaginarium world out there, right? Exactly. So you are, I mean, you are so, have had such a diverse portfolio from jewelry to medical, to machine tool industry, manufacturing industry, yes. I mean this is amazing. And I think uh, I would like to know more about uh, your uh, participation in Dye Mold uh, exhibition also. So I think one of your colleagues would For like sure. to you know, yes. explain that. Yes. So can you invite 
I would like to invite Sankit Shah, who's a business head for one of these uh, verticals, as I mentioned, the management solutions here. So he'll be the best friend to take us through the journey of tool and I manufacturing and industry here. So let's snap it here and uh, our new colleague will join sure. us. Thank you. So now we have Samkit with us from Imaginarium. Thank you, Samkit, for coming here. Thank so, you. For uh, please tell us why you have participated in this Dye Mold show. What are you offering to Dye Mold manufacturers here? So, Tool and Dye is one of the bedrocks for any country to, you know, really grow. That's the, uh, you know, uh, background for manufacturing. Uh, normally, tool rooms take it as a competing technology. So we strongly believe additive manufacturing is more complementary uh, because it's another way of manufacturing. There are multiple ways that actually a tool maker can enhance its offerings, enhance its products and values uh, by using additive manufacturing. So uh, to the tool rooms and to their end customers who are developing uh, new products, uh, it's something that is of immense use. And with the last two years of uh, the unfortunate times, uh, everyone has realized the time to market is very important. Supply chains are a challenge. So the end customer as well as tool rooms, uh, uh, I think they realize the opportunity is now and people are looking at additive manufacturing as a, the next horizon to you know invest in or explore. So we really see a great potential in partnering or uh, complementing the current existing tool and die industry. Very interesting. So uh, regarding this tool and die, uh, what kind of tool and die, in which sectors you are uh, providing your services? So typically it's the wide range of services, uh, some people are, so one of the examples we have is pressure die casting, uh, a lot of them can optimize their tools using metal additive manufacturing, yeah, yeah. Uh, that can actually enhance their delivery times, reduce their sub, you know, timelines to deliver the part, so a tool room can uh, provide it as a service, a manufacturer can use it for their own uh, betterment, uh, there is always a pyramid of you know, uh, use. It starts with hardware understanding, it goes with design optimization, and then it goes to material optimization. Yes. So typically, uh, if hardware is known well, and if design is changed, then uh, there is another potential of creating an entire new uh, dimension of products. Uh, you know, consolidating parts, uh, eliminating the need of assemblies. So there is a wide application across industries. Uh, and tool and die starts at the you know at the bottom because that's where a die is made and then the parts start to make. So I think addressing tool and die challenges and applications, uh, there is a you know larger opportunity uh, that we can address as well. Definitely, I think this is one of the futuristic technology. Not even futuristic now; it has been started using uh, in present day also. But how does it help you know in reducing the lead times to make the die and molds? I would say uh, two value propositions, uh, probably three. Uh, one is uh, you can try to reduce not just the lead time to make the tool, but the cycle times once the tool is ready. Okay. So that actually makes, for example, if you have a million parts and you would need four tools, by reducing a cycle time by 25%, you probably eliminate the need of one more tool. So uh, it's cycle time actually affects uh, the cost per part for everybody. The, the tool maker as well as the end customer. Um, the second is, you know, uh, conformal cooling is a very large application for tool and die. So you are making the same tool in a better way. Uh, also, you can reduce the timelines for complex cases, especially insert molding, etc. So uh, there's a direct implication for timelines and complexity for the tools, as well as the uh, cycle times, which can impact not just the competitiveness of the tool maker, but, you know, the... Uh, even the end user can benefit the go-to-market timelines as well. Very interesting. So uh, now talking about, you were telling me about the, your 99% initiative. Yes, yes. Can you please elaborate on that for our viewers? Yes, yeah, sure. So the other 99% is something that uh, personally we are very excited about. Uh, it basically is a way to define that, you know, rather than looking at everyone who's already in AM and trying to solve their problems, uh, we need a larger population to enter the pie. Only when the addressable market becomes large is where the actual potential of additive manufacturing can be unlocked. Most people will not enter because they either have uh, their education in another streams, which makes relearning and unlearning you know a challenge. So idea is to start with educating, inviting more people, educating, seminars, training, uh, because once they break down what they know of manufacturing 
and they become open to accept additive manufacturing for what it is, for the benefits and the limitation, then I think the potential of not just manufacturing, but the way the products could be designed in the future could be significantly different. So the other 99% is, is the term that is given to make sure that we really spend our time, not just on current business, but looking at inviting the larger uh, uh, unaddressed market uh, to become aware of this and unlock the potential. That's very fascinating. I mean, you are not only doing the social work for the society, but also you are growing the pie, you are growing the ecosystem yes. for the 3D printing and your business. Yes, and you know, it's like making one plus one should always be more than two. Uh, if education is given the right way, then I think uh, the larger market always makes larger opportunities for all of us. So at the end of the day, we serve our purpose in both ways, business as well as inviting more people. And um, fundamentally, we are driven by the passion of AM. So whatever makes the pie bigger is what has a lot of interest from our side. I'm sure our viewers must be very interested to contact you about this 99% program as yes. well as your dye mold services. So can you tell us your contact details? How should the people should contact you? Certainly. So uh, thank you for watching firstly. Um, uh, uh, the way that uh, I would invite you to reach out to us is hello at imaginarium.io. That's our uh, uh, um, email ID where you can reach out to us. And we are extremely excited uh, to address each and every concern or query or interest that you have. Uh, and we look forward to uh, any other emails or queries that you have. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you Thank for you. inviting us. Thank you Thanks so much. Thank you.